Paul? I've, I've been here for like an hour. Yes. I know. I'm trying to think. Was there a more majestic middle finger given to the league than Josh Allen saying, I want to play in a pro am, not a pro bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Hag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. It was beautiful, but... Uh, can, can, I, can I counter? Yes. Seeing... Brian Cox Jr. gets signed by the Bills, knowing that Brian Cox Sr. owns a Bills hat. That's that's just <laughs> as good a middle finger to me. That's just as good to me. That so hits me right in the feels. The hat comes with a neck roll. <laughs> Very interesting. Wasn't voted to Pro Bowl, then voted as an alternate, then said, hey, Mac Jones, go ahead. Um, that all being said, the... the progression of the wide receivers, the emergence of Gabriel Davis, the excellence of Stephon Diggs, McKenzie coming in. We still haven't talked about Isaiah Hodges. I, no. still, I still love the fact that he's just in the back pocket of the Bills organization. Just still, just, just chilling. Just hey, chilling. I'll be there next year. What do you think is on the horizon for Josh Allen in this receiving core moving into 2020? I'm so glad you brought up Isaiah Hodges, right? Yeah. Because coming through the draft process, I liked Hodges a lot better than Gabe Davis. Okay. Right? Both I, have very similar skill sets. When we, yeah, when we came different out. body frames, right? Yeah, yeah. But they're both automatic at catching the football, Yes. right? And I think Hodges can replace that Emmanuel Sanders other mm -hmm. wide receiver role, which, I mean, truth be told, right, I, we're probably done with Emmanuel Sanders, right? The one-year deal, yeah. The one-year deal. I think, I, well... Technically speaking, it's a two-year deal. Did they void out the second There's year? There's a void in the second okay. year. Yeah. So it's the contract, the second year is going to void automatically. It was just a place to hide signing bonus money, guys. So it says it's a two-year deal, but it's it's not a two-year deal. It's a, it was a one-year deal. Mm -hmm. One functional year. Um, so down in the comments section, if there's a wide receiver you think Buffalo's going to go get, uh, go ahead and put that in the comments section. Let's, let's talk about who you think – Buffalo should go add. I definitely think they're going to add somebody, right? You got high, you got Hodges, which again, I like Hodges. Has not really been effective at the NFL level at all. Because he's got to, got to be. Well, that's why he doubled down. It's got to be on the. When we did Knox and Sweeney, where they had Knox and Sweeney, right? Yeah. One's panned out. Yeah. One has. Um, because one was hurt. I don't think there's any universe where Gabe, where you can ignore Gabe Davis's production. Again, no, no, you can't. You can't. You can't ignore that anymore. Like, I don't, not to say that they ignored it for this year, but when you have the opportunity to add a Super Bowl champion at wide receiver who's like a grinder and a worker and a role model at the position across the league, you yeah. add that You add that player. Yeah, but the question we've always talked about is the if. What mm -hmm. if a team takes away digs? Right. Three for seven? Mm -hmm. Gabriel Davis has 675 yards receiving and eight touchdowns. I'm just right. My point is <laughs> – in one game versus Kansas City. No, you, you want he answered the question of could someone else step up if Diggs was taken away? And you right. got the answer to that question. Sure did. Yeah. Now the intricacies of the position, you can't trade what Sanders did versus what Davis did. Right. Okay. Davis he's he's a he's a physical specimen when they got him. But he he understands his reads so well. Mm -hmm. Like you watch the routes that Davis would run and have those touchdown uh, receptions. Those were all route adjustments. Like you just see, you see yeah. the coverage shift, and you say, you you see you see the wheels turning with him, saying coverage is shifting this way. I'm, that's why I'm gonna I'm right there. That's why I'm going. I'm not I'm not going this way. He exhibited in that one game multiple levels of what you would like a number two to do across the field. Hands down. Hands so down. it's great. He, he ran the deep ball. He ran like you said precision routes. He was able to cut make the tough catches underneath. Mm -hmm. He's so many things that you can do with him, and whatever. I mean, I am very excited to see what Dorsey has in, in store for him, mm -hmm. um, and Joe Brady. Mm -hmm. See what he's like. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do. I'm, I'm very interested to see that. But 
do they resign McKenzie? And they part ways with, with, with – can you part ways with Cole Beasley at this point? Could um, McKenzie replace Beasley? Because they don't play – we always talked about you can put McKenzie in for Beasley. They don't play the position the same way. Not at all. Yeah, not at I all. I think a lot of people are, have that misconception that they play the exact same way. They don't. Yeah, no, just just because they're smaller stature receivers. In the doesn't, spot. <laughs> Yeah, do, that doesn't mean that they are they're interchangeable. I don't remember Beasley running a jet sweep. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You look at replaceable draft level players, and they're small. They make them every year. Like I heard you say that about they do. They they make undersized receivers every year, yeah. right? You can get them every year, um, and there's some that the Bills have been tied to. If you pay attention to Twitter, there's one receiver from the Senior Bowl that everybody keeps linking the Bills to, because I think everybody in the NFL understands the Bills need to add some speed at the wide receiver position. They need a little more shake than what Isaiah McKenzie gives you. They have a little more shake than what Cole Beasley gives you. Weren't they last in the act this year? They were down in the league and yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were down in the league and yeah. But I think system has a lot to do with that. I think system has a lot to yeah, do with that. Yeah, it could. It could. Don't have, 70 well, mile guess, an hour wins. Could well, <laughs> guess what? Don't have that worry anymore. <laughs> don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But, well, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of concepts that are crossed over. But, um. Well, let me ask you this. Let me rephrase it. Does Beasley hurt your team by being there? Mm. He's got one more year. Yeah. Do you let him play out his deal? I don't. Really? No, I don't. Mm. But the Bills have been very fortunate with personnel where they haven't had to cut guys, right? Mm-hmm. Name me five players the Bills have cut that were of name players that they, they had to cut for whatever reason. Star of the tour. They have no. Oh, sorry. I'm foreshadowing. <laughs> It's hard to name to name players that they didn't cut at like roster cut down time. Right. Yeah. They don't they don't do it. Mm. They've avoided it. Right? They've avoided it. Every year, like, well, oh, might be Jerry's last year, and nope, here he is. Every year it's up oh, Mario Addison. There's there's your red herring. Yeah, they usually trade you know? him. I mean they actually got value from Marshall Newhouse. They sure did. They also got value for Lee Smith. Seventh round pick and then he retires. That pick even happened yet. <laughs> Poor Atlanta. I, They're so all, disillusioned. All I see is Brandon Bean as Dave Chappelle going, Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> a lot better than Brandon Bean going, Got any more offensive linemen? Got any more, more of them? Got any more of them offensive linemen? Got any more practice squad plays? So... Does Cole Beasley hurt your team? No, but the Bills have avoided cutting guys. Yes, and yeah, yeah. There's a big locker room piece to that, right? There is. There is. So, ooh, ooh. There, there's, a, there's a fun question. Can the Bills absorb the cultural loss of Cole Beasley in the locker room if they cut him on the last year of his deal? There's a lot of noise going around about Cole. Everybody on that team was asked specifically about Cole Beasley during a press conference at some point throughout the year, and they all fell on the sword for him, right? They all had his back and said, listen, his beliefs are his beliefs, my beliefs are my beliefs, but he's my teammate, I support whatever he does. They all said the same thing. Because that's what he's established in that locker room. That's right. great. I don't, right. No, but I, like I said, I was just posing the question out there. I think you bring up a great point, the fact that the culture that you built takes time. Mm-hmm. It, take, it takes that long to destroy it. Mm-hmm. If you cut him, that's a possibility. And weighing that against saving $5 million versus losing your team, it's kind of a big deal. But, but the opposite side of that coin is, is if if Cole Beasley has another year like this year, is it just too noisy? I didn't think it was that noisy to begin with. Mm. I mean, it did. People, I talked think, about it, but I think, as you stated before, and as we talked about many times before, winning hides a lot of things. Yeah, but players don't like getting asked about other players. They don't. Laugh, they don't like that. You know, like they don't like that. And not saying the players would push Beasley out. I'm not making that inference at all. No. But what I am saying is that if you do lose Cole Beasley, he goes to the Patriots. I'm not trying to start a fight. I'm just telling you what would happen. You know what would happen. If you cut him, he is catching passes from Mac Jones the next day. Yeah, you're right. I think that's I think that's a loss you can sustain though. 
I think it's sustainable. I'm just saying, I'm just putting it out there. That's my opinion. I mean, it doesn't have to be true. I mean, they know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know if you want to pay that much money to that level of production again. How much is he making? Eight? Six to eight? Or something? Uh, yeah, I thought it was in the seven number. That's yeah. it, yeah. Like, yeah. But th- 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 after yeah. next, but after next year, what are you going to do? You're in the same boat that you're in now. So do you address the need now or do you address the need next year? The smart money is you address the need now and then you see if you can move Cole Beasley, which you probably can't, right? I yeah. assume you probably can't move him. Um, I'm sure you could for that amount of money. Uh, I don't know about that. Do you think because of the noise he's made, you can't move him? Oh, uh, age and on the last year of his deal. I mean, I know I know a team that would take him. What, the Rams? Giants. Name me their starting receiver core. Oh, wait. Sterling Shepard. <laughs> uh, Kenny Galladay. John Ross. Uh, not a slot guy, not a slot guy. Yeah, no. Darius Slayton. Mm, Evan Ingram is the free agent, I think. I'm trying to say receiving things. Different. No, Evan Ingram's a free agent. I think he's a free agent. Is he a free agent? Isn't he? I think over the cap told me that. No, no. Did they pick up his fifth year? They didn't. He's had three coaches since he was drafted. <laughs> Is Evan Ingram really a free agent? I don't know. I think yeah. we all agree that they're going to continue to put assets in there. They're going to continue to put coins in the slot machine. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Are they a receiver away from making the Super Bowl? Are they one receiver away from making the Super Bowl? You know, we talked about this last year in the offseason, and this receiver group is, is teetering closer on the side of under, is like teetering close on the side of, of troubling, right? Because you had Beasley near the end of his deal. You got you have no idea what your asset is in Isaiah Hodges. Emmanuel Sanders was on a contract year. I mean, Isaiah McKenzie was on a contract year. Mark West Stevenson is a I don't know. So you have Stephon Diggs and you have Gabe Davis, and then after that, there's no promises. It's like looking at the little giants. It, yeah, you just you're looking at guys, and it's just a group of. Well, we got one guy. We got the other guys. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. I feel so bad saying that. No, but it's and the fact of the matter is you don't have a lot of assets there. You don't. Yeah, like, yeah. You don't have a lot of assets. My point is this: with with Cole Beasley, let's say you decide to go with him, you sign McKenzie to another one year deal. Mm-hmm. You have Diggs. You have Davis. Do you make a splash to make both? McKenzie and Beasley expendable in the draft, like like an Atlanta Falcons when they mortgage their one draft for Julio Jones. If you think you're a receiver away, a third wide out away, kind of like, kind of like LA, you know they got Cooper Cup, they got Beckham, they got Higby there. You got a bunch, you got Van Jefferson, you got a bunch of receivers there. Dude, you just made a, you just made an awesome point. Oh, crap. I don't even know what it was. No, 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 no. The dynamic of a passing offense in the NFL is different than it was eight years. ago. Right. Yeah. Cooper Cup has really changed the way that people are going to draft, right? Because here was this, again, undersized guy, didn't really know what to do with him, really shifty returner, yeah. right? But Cooper Cup has changed the way that teams are going to value players of that stature in their position, right? Mm-hmm. Buffalo doesn't have that. You, you, don't, you don't have Cooper Cup on this team. You don't have an Isaiah McKenzie. You don't have a Marcus Stevenson. You don't have an Cole Beasley. It's certainly not Isaiah Hodges, right? So you don't you don't have that guy, but when you get to that draft room, if that guy's there, if you have that guy on your board, that's you need that. You need that dynamic, right? Yeah, yeah. And Buffalo doesn't have it, and it's not going to be on the free agent market. No. So you, that's an awesome point. Co- Cooper Cup has changed the way that teams will value that that style. Of Wasn't player. he a late round guy? Then? He was. Yeah, but that yeah. doesn't. But but look at the production. Yeah, I saw the one post game that he got, he was talking about. Like, he asked him about the one touchdown he scored, and he went into such detail about how he was able to read the defense, get behind him. And but it's like, players like wow. that, Buffalo doesn't miss players like that from an evaluation standpoint. No, no, they no. don't miss the smart players. They don't miss the heady players. They don't miss those guys. Every player they draft is that heady player. Every one. So if he's out there, they'll find him. Mm. So you think they will draft another wide end? You got a bunch of guys. Outside of Gabe Davis, or outside of Gabe Davis and stuff. Who did they draft last year? 
or Fresh Stevenson? No, I'm trying to look at the, the whole draft. Offensive player, offensive player. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right. hmm. What would you guys do? Would you draft one? You think they need another wide out on this team? Trey Diggs, what? I, Paul. Whoa, 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 whoa. 